your boy Tom. Let's go. And we are living our life to the fullest. And you know what we want you to do. Go down below, do us some favors <laughs> real quick. Like, share, subscribe, comment, hit that bell notification so you can be notified of every video. Yeah, y'all, we are back with another video. We're doing the big two letter word Q where it's really three. Q and A session where you we ask you all to uh, comment some questions on our DNT pages. Some of you comment, and so we're gonna answer four of them today. Somebody say four. Four. All right, so we're gonna let Deja start it off, and then I will wrap it up. All right, just to give y'all a little more information about us, you know, bring y'all into the Allen home. Y'all ready? Here we go. So question number one: well, How did you know Tyler was your kingdom spouse? So this is a. That's all for you. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna be honest, it took me a while. Okay, because if you guys know us from way back when we started, um, I think those were the first few videos, right there. Those were the first few videos. Oh yeah. Um so with that being said, first. we went to daycare together, never really taught, we went to school together. Mm -hmm. Uh, middle school and elementary school here and there. Um, yeah, yeah, right, then we right. didn't go to the same high school, right. but then we ended up going to the same college. Um, so I would see him, I heard him singing throughout the years as we were growing up and stuff like that. And he inspired me in so many ways because I was like, how is this dude flourishing like this? How is he carrying on services and stuff like that? Because that was just foreign to me, like for young people, like, you know, you didn't, you really didn't see a lot of young people putting themselves out there, living for Christ, um, enjoying themselves while they're living for Christ. Um, and so that really inspired me. And I knew I also like to sing as, as well, and um, that we shared some of the same goals. Um, so with that being said, <laughs> when we got to college, um, First impression was everything. Like he had me laughing from even <laughs> 2017, but we had first really interacted with each other. Um, he asked me was I dating and stuff like that. And I was like, no, I just got out of a bad relationship. And he had just got out of a relationship. Um, and it just like really started from there. So from that point on, we didn't talk for a little minute. And then like in 2018, we caught back up and we started hanging out and <laughs> he started coming to my room. I started going to his. I started- It was sanctimonial room. then. We weren't doing nothing, nothing <laughs> yeah, saint. Yeah, we weren't going to We did a little emotion. Continue. Um, <laughs> so he would hang out with my friends and then I would hang out with his. Mm. Well, he'll hang out with my friend and I would hang out with his my friends. My friends. Cause I had, yeah. I had several <laughs> Cause people. Cause I didn't have that many friends. <laughs> like that. Hell, nobody. <laughs> Anyway, so with that being said, y'all, like, um, we dated, we started dating in 2018, I believe. And then, um, <laughs> we dated for like three or five, three to five months. Mm -hmm. And then I was just like, I don't know if I can do this. You know, I knew he was everything that I needed, but I knew Tyler loved me. And I just felt bad because I felt like I didn't love him like that back you know i was like it was just like a strong light for me it wasn't really love um so after the first time we broke up we broke up the first time okay i told him i just need to get myself together and i can't really remember everything i said um but we got back together was it before it was after he came back from cuba, uh, it was before I went to cuba. really like okay. I had, uh, it was literally the night before I met. I had, she had, we used to go to this place called Friday. It's, it's a local place, it's Wayne place. Oh, and, yeah, we used to And a uh, mobile, <laughs> and a uh, black owned place. And so she had just came back, mm -hmm. bought some food for her friend Anthony, brother of mine. And so I stopped there, and she was trying to avoid me. But I just got, I talked to her. We talked, and I somehow convinced her. We got right back together that night. And I went to Cuba for a week. Couldn't talk to her for seven to six days. Yeah. No communication because I had no reception. Yeah. And then, like, it was just too far. Wasn't it too mm, far? It, Cuba was, yeah, like, near me. I was out of the States. Yeah. I was, like, way in another country. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, what if something happens? And then in my mind, I'm like, I can't talk to her. And 
I don't know what she probably thinking right now. And my main mind was I'm enjoying Cuba, but I was ready to get back to her. So yeah. we ended up getting back together right before I left for Cuba. You know? Yeah, and during that time, like, I was good, but I, I really did miss him. And I couldn't tell him I, how much I missed him. Because yeah. uh, I remember when I would be at work and I would just go back and uh, scroll through our messages that we had before he went to Cuba and was Vice reading versa. them and Vice just versa. smile and be like, oh, I miss him or whatever. Yeah, looking at pictures um, and videos. So mm -hmm. then, from that point on, my love started to grow for him, but it wasn't mature enough to where it was equivalent to his, if that makes sense. Um, so, <laughs> we stayed together for like almost two months after that. And then like, I think it was before or after Thanksgiving, we broke up again. <laughs> she broke up again, y'all. I was just like, what did I do this time? Bro, I was so lost. I was so lost. I was just, I was, I was like, just, what did I do? I was just tossed between you guys because I'm going to be honest, like, I never learned how to date a guy. I never knew how to um, really, I knew that, you know, when, you, when it came to approaching a guy, like, you're supposed to be all desperate and stuff like that, you know, and, you know, in some instances, you play hard to get. I knew that part. Um, I knew not to let a guy run over me, but in a relationship, I didn't know how to treat a guy. I didn't know how to be honest because I can only go from what I've seen my mom and my dad do. And I was like really, really sheltered. So I was picking the wrong things. Like I would see guys doing this and that and I would be attracted to that. That was the, that was the wrong thing to be attracted to. Um, I, I was used to dating hood guys, I'll just say that at the time and um <laughs> Tyler was he was a church guy and he was churchy he was very churchy so ch like, like churchy like, <laughs> I done called out a whole lot from what I was when I first met DJ like, yeah. it was bad <laughs> yeah it wasn't it was like it was good um we both just needed balance in different areas like Naturally so, he needed balance. And like me, I needed spiritual balance because, you know, I would just go a little overboard sometimes. So we, we were, let's say it this way. We, we kept were, each other in line. Right, we were, we were the, the feeling for what each other was missing. Mm -hmm. She needed very much spiritual guidance. Like, yeah. very, like she was in the church, but it was just so much she didn't understand about church. Right. And I was there to be the one to be like, okay, this, 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 this. Like when it came to studying and breaking down the word and scriptures and looking after this and guys and discerning guys and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I was I was more so of that teacher to DJ so far as natural and spiritual. Yeah. For me, DJ was more spiritually, not more naturally uh, my feeling because naturally I didn't, you know, vice versa. You know, I just thought that people take me as I am. But then what I had to realize that when you're with somebody, it's two people working together to become one. And so there was some bumps where she told me some things about myself. And I tell people all the time, if you're going to be in a relationship, you ought to be able to take constructive criticism. Now, there's a difference between trying to tear down a person. But you all, you also got to realize constructive criticism is what it says. Constructive is there to construct, but it's not going to feel good. There were some things she told me that did not feel good, but it yeah. helped me in a lot of ways. Things my mother and would tell me, but I just thought they just family. But it's yeah. different when it's coming from somebody that you love and that, that really wants to see the best in you. Now, you may not see it at that time, at that point, but you have to understand that they're not there to try to tear you down. So I had to really grow in that. But we were each other's feelings. Like whatever we lack, we feel that for each other. So. Right. And then so like during that time as well, I had to learn how to, you know, I was very emotionless. I was very nonchalant and laid back really. Yeah, very much so. Then and I was very emotional. I was just not tapping to my emotions because I had gone through some stuff that just made me learn how to shut down my emotions. So when people would get sad, I was just like, oh, you're all right. I was, like it was bad. It was bad. It would be. I would literally have to like. I yeah. wouldn't say he would go have to all, cry. 
But I would get, I, I would get so mad with DJ. Like I would like, I would have to literally talk to her like she was crazy, you know, not disrespectfully, but I would have to talk to her like I was her dad. Mm -hmm. Like I used to have, she would say, you ain't my dad, but I would have to do that because that was the only way I would penetrate through. It was like it was stabbing a rock and finally you trying to get out this cave and then you see this little peak of light coming through this little hole. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's how I was with DJ. I had to I keep smashing, smashing, smashing until, you know, it just started becoming natural. But it was very hard at first. Yeah. Very hard because she was raised under, you know, a dad who didn't show emotions. Yeah, and I, I was raised I, under a mom who showed dad, all her emotions. I never seen my dad cry. And, and so, I saw like, my mom cry all the time. For the longest, yeah. like, I heard, like, when I was younger, like, you know, like, when I was Oh, you want to get somebody that's just like your dad? Yeah. This and the third. So that stuff, that stuff stuck with me. But I'm here to tell every woman that's right not, now. That's not. You have to discern. Yes, you have to know yes. God's voice for yourself. Yes, you yes. have to first. You have to have a relationship with God. Yes. And don't look for others' opinions for your destiny because, or your soulmate because that's what I was doing. That's why I was so tossed to and fro. Because I had people in my ear, you know what I mean? I had people who wasn't even trying to pursue a, a godly relationship. So you have to really be mindful of snakes and people who try to control, you know, Witchcraft. your life. Very much so. Witchcraft. Some people will even try to uh, live through you, Witchcraft. you know. Yeah. And you just have to be mindful of manipulation and demonic connections Most because definitely. the enemy never wants us to reach our destiny or to um, be with the soulmate that God has for us and I just want to encourage you like those of you who are still waiting on God there is somebody out there for you um so that's what I let you know you heard his side um another this is the last thing when we got back together in 2019, right, baby? It was 2019. When we got, the batter, got back together in 2019, I seen how much I was growing spiritually um, when I got um, more infatuated with him and more involved with Tyler in the relationship. And I'm not talking about, like, sexually or anything like that. Um, as I seen him... Um, as I see him in services and stuff like that, as I see him, the life that he lived outside of service and stuff like that, I started to become attracted to that and also more attracted to the presence of God. You know, it's nothing like the presence of God. And so once I got a taste of the presence of God and uh, learning the different gifts and stuff that he had on the inside of me, you know, I realized that Tyler was a part of that. God used Tyler to pull that out of me. Because I was real point. shy, 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 yeah. shy then. And that's key point with relationships. You ought to be able to pull <laughs> things out of each other. You, you. I mean, it's, it's, it's. You shouldn't be with somebody that can't see something in you and say, "Look, we're going to work at this." Right. It, it, because you got to realize you're going to always tell yourself things that are lies, and you're going to believe it, and you're going to think it's okay. But you, it takes somebody to be in your life to say, "No, I'm seeing past the comfortability. I'm seeing past you being cool and commit." It's time for you to come out to that new person. There's somebody greater than you. And it took me, y'all, it took a long time. I mean, even now sometimes I have to dig, but um, I went through so much to get, to, for us to get to where we are today. I, I stood through a lot, you know, but I knew what God had promised me. And not many people would have done what I put up, what I put up. Would have done what I have had done to be where I am today. A lot of people probably would have gave up a long time ago. Right. But I am a person that believes in long suffering. And yep. so I did. I believed in love through all the stuff that Asian and I have gone through before we got married. I stood the test. I stood the test and I just kept reminding God, I don't want to be with nobody else. That is my purpose part. I knew from the beginning DJ was going to be my wife. But I told God, I said, Lord, I want you to reveal it to her. Yeah. Because most times, nine times out of ten, the man sees first. Let me just knock it out. The man sees first that, that he's going to be married to that woman. Mm -hmm. Most times. Before the woman, though. Yeah, you rarely ever hear a woman say, 
I knew that he was the one, unless it's like full of lust yeah. and flesh. Yeah, very rare, rare. Most time you hear me. But yeah. Question number two: If what kind of parent do you see yourself in the future? Overprotective, strict, lenient, and what are your beliefs in raising children? So I see myself as, um, I always, I try to always set goals um, for when there are new things that I am about to approach in my life because I think that's really important because I feel like God allows you to see different things around you, different examples, and you go through different experiences yes. that will help you know what not to do and what to do when that um when whatever that thing is is coming so i definitely want to go further than how good of parenting my mother and my father were to me um there's some things i want to do differently um like when it comes to me and my family um we all loved each other <laughs> we were close when we wanted to be close but you know, we weren't as open, okay? So, by me being sheltered and my my family was not really open with a lot of things that I felt like I should have learned from them. You know, I know now that as we are walking into parenthood that I am gonna be very open with my daughter and just have an open line of communication with her and allow her to know, to see and know that she can trust me with valuable you know valuable information not being best friends and stuff like that but you know i want my daughter to be able to come to me and be like hey mom did you go through this and you know like i'm gonna be real like when it comes to sex when it comes to drugs when it comes to drinking when it comes to peer pressure all of that stuff yeah. It's so much more that I can name. It's best. You have the different best. diseases that yeah. you can get. Yeah. I'm going to be open with my daughter because I don't want her to make the same mistakes as I did. Yeah. You know, and we're not in comp we're not in competition with our parents, but I do believe that God does allow us to go and grow and to do better in everything that we can do. Um, so I'm not going to be strict. Um, I'm not going to be easygoing either. <laughs> I'm not gonna be easy going either. I'm gonna be on her. I am gonna teach her how to be a lady. I'm gonna mm -hmm. always encourage her. Um, I don't want her to fight confident, confident, confidence issues like I had to, and sometimes uh, some stuff that I'm still overcoming. So I'm, I'm always gonna be reaffirming her always. and reassuring her. And redirecting her sometimes because it's gonna be time for that as well. So I won't be straight. I'm just gonna be a loving, uh, caring mother um, that wants to be there for her daughter in every way and for my future kids as well because it's important. You know, if they don't know something, how do you expect them to react and how you just how do you expect them to respond? You know. Right. So and I want her to be very intellectual too so i do know that we are going to be in front of the screens and stuff like that but i already got in my mind like with my daughter she's not going to be in front of the tv all the time oh, like some of these babies are they have because, no social social skills yeah they mess up are, uh, right and at first i was saying i was going to homeschool my baby but i was like no nah, i don't want to do that neither because sometimes you know we believe the report of the lord but sometimes them kids turn out to be widows and you know, everybody's wearing that all way. <laughs> I don't want to offend nobody. But um, I want her to have social skills. I want her to develop the way that she needs to be developed. Um, and with God, all things are possible. And I'm just with you. Now, me. <laughs> I do believe I'm not going to be strict. I'm probably going to be the lenient one. Now nah, it's the girl. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go and tell you. DJ gonna be first and never proud about a lot. You let that girl do that, I told her no. Well, I, I mean, I ain't seen nothing wrong with it. Well, if I said, you know, I'm, I'm gonna tell you that right now. Miracle probably gonna get over on me. You know, but then I'll probably get mad. I'm gonna get mad because I'm feeling like I'm, you know, she playing me. 
you know, but that's just me because, you know, hey, I got a weakness for uh, baby girls. Like, yeah, my god sister, when she was a baby, I used to hate to see her get a woman. I used to hate to see her get in trouble. I would try to protect her. That's just how I am, but I do believe in, um, I am a little old school. Now, I won't be as old school as some of my parents and them words, you know, was. I will let them have a balance, but so far as just doing whatever, no. I will not be like that. We will uh, enforce, you know, having a relationship with the Lord and, you know, keeping God first. And we'll be that example in front of them. No, I'm not going to make my children be in church all the time. You know what I'm saying? But they're going to go. They're going. They're going to go to church. They're going. You know, we, we will keep that in the house. The, that scripture says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So. We do believe in that, you know. I am, I am going to be the one that you can come and, you know, that parent where you can come and talk to me about anything. I, I've always wanted to extend that. I, I my mom, my family well, is very different from DJs. We are open. Like I'm, I was able to go to my mom about, I ain't gonna say everything, but a lot more than what DJ was able to open up about. Like, yeah. My brothers and sisters, we get together now. She'll tell you, we get together now. We be talking about stuff that we did 20, well, 15, 10, 17 years ago. I'm being like, what? How we grown, man. Ain't nothing you can do right now, man. Give it here. You know what I'm saying? So that's just how open we are, you know. So, yeah. All right. Third question. Um, Which one are you more proud of? Your marriage or your children? Your children. Advice for Christian couples dating. How do you be romantic and still holy? Now, get me your Wait, say it again. Advice for Christian couples dating. So, the question is how do you be romantic and still holy? I'm going to go first on this one. I love stuff like this. Because when me and DJ was dating for so long, we that's when we started DNT, if you remember. We started DNT because we said we wanted to show people how we can be young and date and still be saved. That was the main motive of DNT. And I remember when we first did it, DJ came up with the inspiration. And I was like, I oh. think, yeah, I think I had had a dream or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I think we should. Yeah. You know. And so we started it like two years ago. We started it and it's, we've been at it since. And now we're married. But it's first of all, don't put yourself in tempting situations. Now, we got a story out there where we talk about we talk about we failed. Yeah, y'all go check that out. <laughs> y'all make that's one. That's a funny video. We talked about, you know, we failed. We did it. But you live, you learn, just because, you know, you don't put yourself in tempting situations. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's one. Number two, it is okay to be romantic without going and tempting yourself, mm -hmm. you know, because you have power over your flesh. You know what I'm saying? God has given us a, the ability to date. It is, it is okay. Now, I do believe when I was dating, I kissed. I did. It's just the way you kiss. Now, you know how you get. If you get turned off from the tongue, you know you. keep that tongue in that mouth. You know you. Okay. Keep those lips and move on. Okay. <laughs> hey, <Peck. laughs> okay. Just listen. Like them you lips will get you in trouble. Them lips. Oh. oh, I ain't gonna go there. I ain't gonna. All right, it'll get you to hurt you illegally. <laughs> All right, and you don't want to do that. Okay, so I mean, it is very important as Christians to have a balance. We mm -hmm. church. Our first date was church, literally. Yeah. Our first day she was moving out her dorm and we went to church. And that's all we did for our relationship was church, 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 church. We didn't do nothing else but church. And it got to the point we was like, hey, bro, it's got to be more than just church. And it is. It's called a balance. The Bible says I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He didn't say I come that you may have church. There ain't nothing wrong with you. He said life. Meaning you there is there is, he's giving us everything pertaining to spiritual life and natural life. Okay, that's the Bible. So we have to have a balance. You, it's okay to take them to the movie. Dress. I, I told my wife one day, dress up. We went to a, a dinner. I told her dress up. And so I said, you ain't gotta look all churchy. You gotta look like you, you know, we been, you know, tempt, you know, being tempting and stuff, but dress up, go out. We go to the we went to the beach. We started, we would go to the beach, we would go to the movies, we would go across the bay, we would do all type of stuff, having the movie nights, not with the movie nights. Gotta be careful with those. Have you about two or three couples with you? Yeah, okay? and make sure you have some people, because I, I was a devil. It's a popcorn. I, I'm telling you okay. what I would do. I would keep over late, knowing she had to drive Purpose all the way back. Purpose sweet. Purpose sweet. And I would wait, she would say stuff like, okay. she would say stuff like, uh, oh, it's so late. Oh, I don't feel like driving. Well, you ain't got to drive, man. You got to Don't feel like you. Don't feel like me, I said, you ain't got to drive, man. Yes, I do. She would try to fight me. 
I did. for so long. But I had a way to be convinced. God forgive me, because that, that ain't good. <laughs> I'm gonna please forgive me, Jim. That is not. That is. Not, we, I'm not gonna worry about See, we're that. gonna tell our daughter this stuff, like what not to do. Okay. Yeah, don't do what your daddy did. You know, if the you know you need to go home. I remember one time DJ got in trouble with her mama, cause we had drove to her house. She tried to hide. DJ is very hard with being sneaky, when she would try to be sneaky. And I used to look at her and be like, what? That don't even, you know. So, it is. You have to have a balance when it comes to relationship. Always, always have a balance. It's okay to be romantic. You don't have to be sexually involved to be romantic. No. I remember I would do stuff for DJ where I would dress up a different rooms or different little things and just send her cars and stuff like that. You know, after the day, just those are romantic things. It's the small things. I remember one day I was on the road. Every day DJ got an edible ring. Every day DJ got a flower. And we were engaged every day. And they were well over a hundred dollars, but I didn't care about the price. Even when I would buy stuff, DJ would say, "You don't have to buy me all that." But that's just who I am. I want you to know that my my romance ain't just in me having sex. My romance is deeper than sex. My romance is in affirming you. You're beautiful. I know she she lacked confidence, so I would affirm her. You know what I'm saying? I would do things to make her feel. I would push her in areas where she felt very uncomfortable. Yeah, you can do this, and then she would get a thumb up and be like, "See." <laughs> So, you know, that's my thing. Um, yeah, and also I just want to add this. You know, sometimes your love languages, they start off one way, but as you grow and as you mature, you know, sometimes they, they can get rearranged. Yeah. Because now, like, <laughs> at first, like, I was like the type, when we first started dating, I was like, um, you ain't gotta do all that because I, I ain't about that. Um, I'm pretty simple and stuff like that. But now that we done got married, you know, and it's just a span of two to three years, yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm a little bit more extra now. Like, I do like gifts and stuff now, you know. I tell him <laughs> what I want. And even then, I think, I don't wanna talk about the ring situation because some of y'all probably gonna be like, that must be a surprise, and it do. I remember when we was, I told him what kind of ring I wanted. I told him what engagement ring I wanted. Yeah, me and you my know. whole world was just like. <laughs> it's supposed to be a surprise. But that's when I was finally starting to shift She tried, around. and I was against it. She was like, I want this ring. And I saw that price, it was like $2,000. I said, who? Who gonna pay that? I said, not for no first, no, no, no. I went, but, like I do, I always tell DJ I'm not gonna do something. And then turn around and end up doing it. Like I'll get mad. I'm the type of person I get mad and just say stuff first and I think. And she know that. And she'll admit and not what she do, she'll wait and be like, and I come back and be like, what you want me to do? Mad and no, all, but I do it. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I mean, hey. Yeah. Um, yeah, guys, and that's pretty much all of the questions. Um, of course, if you guys have more, you can just let us know under this video. Um, y'all know we all... Was that all the questions? We got one more. Oh, we got one more. Um, but we're going to have to do a part two. Okay, y'all. So we're going to do a part two. So I'll tell you what. Tell you what, because we have already gone over our time frame, and we're going to leave this in the video. Yes, yes. So I tell you what we're going to do. Instead of doing four, we're just going to do three today. And then on the next go round, y'all comment some questions down in the comment section, and we'll add this fourth one along with that one. All right. With that being said, we hope y'all enjoyed this video, all 30 minutes of it, y'all. Y'all go watch it, take down your notes, lay out, have a good time. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Thank you for all the support. Until next time. Who says?